Hello folks. In this video I'm going to be reviewing the new third generation Focusrite Scarlet Solo Studio Bundle. This is a studio bundle available from Focusrite that includes the third generation Focusrite Scarlet Solo interface as well as a condenser microphone and some monitoring headphones and an XLR cable. The same bundle is available with the 2i2 interface uh, with the same microphone and headphones but the one I'm going to be taking a look at is the one that comes with the Scarlet Solo interface. So first I'm just going to take a quick look at everything that the bundle comes with and uh, kind of my general thoughts on it and then I'm going to hook it up actually record some audio with it and let you hear how it sounds. Now first things first it obviously does come with the Scarlet Solo interface. This is the third generation version. I'm not going to go over this super in depth because I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of reviews of this out there. The preamps are the same as what is in the the third generation 2i2 interface, but I'm just going to kind of give you my general thoughts on it and uh, kind of what my experience has been using it. I haven't done a ton of testing with it so far, but I have used it a little bit, so I'll just kind of let you know what I think. And first things first, right off the bat, Focusrite gets one thing correct that I haven't seen done this well on any other interface that I've had, and that is they know their audience and they have a little piece of plastic to peel off the front, and I haven't done it yet. I've saved it for this review. Not the easiest thing to pull off, kind of get stuck on the knobs, but there you go, a piece of plastic to peel off. So many of them leave this part out. <laughs> but anyway, very small, simple interface, but definitely has some nice features for the money, and it feels like it's built pretty well and has good sound quality. Again, not really telling you anything new, lots of reviews on this. Has only has one microphone preamp, but it does have two separate inputs, one for more designed for like an instrument, and they both have their own separate uh, gain knobs. Now with the specific drivers for this interface, you can control uh, some of the features uh, through the software on the computer, but I do like that it just has very simple buttons on the front uh, to change the settings. The knobs are very solid, feel very smooth, particularly the volume, uh, the monitoring volume knob. It's metal and it turns very, very smooth and consistently. Uh, just has a very nice feel to it. Reminds me of uh, some of the old high-end audio gear that they used to just have just really awesome knobs on it. Quarter inch headphone output, has a USB-C connection for power and for connecting to the computer, and just has a regular uh, TRS line outputs for studio monitors. The headphone output is very clean and it does get plenty loud for any headphones that I have. I even have some 300 ohm HD 650s and some headphones that have a lot lower ohm resistance but they are very insensitive and that's some Fostex headphones. Uh, both of those get plenty loud for me uh, with this headphone out. So plenty of volume there and uh, sounds very clean. Anyway, overall, simple, good quality interface for the money. Very small and easy to use. And another quick note, I did plug this directly into a Windows 10 laptop. It connected immediately, no problems. Uh, my DAW recognized it and it was working straight away. Uh, no need to get uh, separate drivers or anything, just plugged it in and it worked perfectly. Now they do have special drivers for this which add some functionality in terms of being able to adjust settings on the computer. And I know in a lot of cases those drivers will decrease the round trip latency. Um, for me, I, you know, I don't sing, I'm not a musician, I don't play any instruments. So I'm generally not, you know, mixing together music and, uh, you know, layering tracks and that kind of thing to where the, the latency really bothers me. So I always just use the generic drivers uh, with any interface I have. I love to be able to just plug it into the computer and go. No need for extra drivers, and this one does work perfectly for that. It does include an XLR cable. Seems like perfectly good quality. The connectors aren't a uh, name brand, so yeah, they're not, you know, going to be the best quality out there, but they're not bad at all. And... Just real quick, I did pull the, the connector open, and the soldering looks fine. Doesn't seem to have any um, stray wayward wires, you know, like strands dangling around in there, so seems to be assembled well, should work fine. Does come with a USB cable, a USB-C to USB type A for connecting to the computer. Uh, this is the microphone it comes with. Uh, it took me a little while to actually find the specs for this. The only place I could find them was actually in the PDF manual on Focusrite's website. There was nothing in the box that listed the specifications. There was nothing on um, any of the retailer websites. So 
took me a little bit to find them, but once I did, the specs seemed pretty good. Uh, definitely in line for what you would expect for a microphone in this um, sort of price range, even though this microphone is not sold separately. Considering the bundle, including the headphones, the XLR cable, and this microphone only adds about $100 to the cost of the interface, you can figure this is, you know, probably a sub $100 microphone. And like I said, for that kind of category, the specs seem fine. Build quality actually seems pretty nice. It's got a lot of weight to it. Uh, the fit and finish is decent. It's all metal. The grill is nice and sturdy and seems, uh, you know, pretty well done. It does come with a metal microphone mount. And it does have an included 5 8 to 3 8 thread adapter. But one thing I did find kind of interesting, if you take this thread adapter out of there, if you look down in there, there's actually a little step down and there's uh, 3 8 threads uh, down inside the mount itself. So if you have long enough threads on your microphone stand or boom arm or whatever, you can potentially thread it directly into this mount without even using the adapter. But either way, you don't really have to be able to do that because it does come with a thread adapter. But it was just uh, something I found kind of interesting that it had those threads down in there. XLR connection on the bottom. Cardioid pattern. Condenser microphone. Diaphragm is just under an inch at uh, 20 millimeter according to the specifications. And it's a very compact microphone. It's not quite as short as my Lewitt uh, LCT 440 Pure, but the diameter is pretty small. You know, it's a bit smaller around than something like a Rode NT1, and it's short, a little bit shorter than a Rode NT1. So overall, a uh, very compact little microphone. Feels like it's built well. And from the small amount of testing I've done so far, seems like it sounds pretty good too. But in a little bit here, I'll hook it up to the interface, start recording with it, and you'll get to see how it sounds. And for point of comparison, so far I have actually been recording with the Lewitt LCT440 Pure connected into my USB Pre 2 interface. The headphones that it comes with are probably the weakest part of the package, but they're okay. But I don't think they quite live up to the quality of the interface and the microphone. They have a standard 1 8 inch TRS connection, but they also do come with a quarter inch adapter. So that's nice, that way you can plug them into just about anything. They are a very low impedance and a very high sensitivity, so they will get very loud with uh, just about any source that you can plug them into. In fact, they got louder at lower volume levels on the solo interface than any other headphones I have. Build quality is okay. Uh, it's nothing outstanding. The feel of the plastics and stuff is a little bit cheaper than some other headphones, but again, they work just fine. The sound on them is fairly balanced. I think they should work pretty good as monitors. Unsurprising for the cost of the sound really isn't going to blow you away. But I think they're perfectly adequate. Uh, they're totally usable for monitoring and, you know, recording. For me, probably the biggest downside is just the size of the ear cups. The covering feels pretty nice. It's pretty soft. And the padding inside is pretty soft as well. But just the size of the ear cups is a bit small, so they're not quite as comfortable for me. And just as a point of comparison, these are my Sony MDR7506 headphones. And they actually do have a very similar sound to these uh, Scarlett Studio headphones. I would have to say the frequency response of the two is actually probably pretty similar. I think the Sonys might have a tiny edge in overall sound quality over the Scarlett headphones. But the main reason I wanted to show these Sony headphones is just to show the ear cup size. And you can see uh, the difference in the openings inside. The ear cups on these aren't tiny. Um, they're really, really close, but they're just they just don't quite fit all the way over my ears, so they're not quite as comfortable as something like the Sony's for me. But overall, they do sound fine, they work fine, and they do the job as intended, I think, with this kit uh, just fine. So as I said, up to this point, I've been recording with the Lewitt LCT440 Pure, so I'm going to go ahead and get switched over to the Scarlett Solo Bundle using the Solo interface and the included microphone and headphones. Okay, so now I'm recording with the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Studio. I'm using the Solo interface, the included XLR cable, and the included microphone and headphones. You can see where I have the gain set to get the levels where I want them, uh, probably about 60 to 65 percent or so. And I do not currently have the air mode enabled. So there you go, that's how it sounds. I don't have a pop filter on the microphone at all, but I'm just kind of talking just slightly to the side of the microphone with the microphone pointed at the corner of my mouth, probably about uh, two and a half, three inches away from my mouth. I'm not a singer. You don't want to hear me try to sing, but
but hopefully just talking into the microphone like I was with the Lewitt, you'll be able to get a general idea of how the microphone sounds. Maybe if I be quiet for a moment, you can turn the volume up a little bit and listen for any self-noise, either from the microphone or from the interface. I believe the self-noise specification for the microphone is 16 dB A-weighted. So not the lowest thing out there, but like I said, definitely in line with uh, other microphones in kind of the $100 range or so. And just for the heck of it, I'm just going to go ahead and read a little something so you can get a little bit more audio with this setup. Jean Vanier was talking about a community called L'Arche. His words were eloquent, and they echoed the feelings I had in my heart for the people I'd discovered at Apple Creek. He talked about people who were removed from society simply because they lacked mental competence and were unable to care for themselves. Vanier referred to them affectionately as little ones. He meant that, in the eyes of the world, they were unimportant and very often forgotten. Society could easily brush them aside, especially if they were removed from sight in an institution. All right, now I have the air mode enabled on the interface. The air mode just kind of boosts the higher frequencies to try and give a little bit more um, open airiness to the sound. So I wanted to record a little bit with that enabled just so you can get an idea for how that sounds. Now I'm sure there's going to be lots of testing out there for not only this interface, but the 2i2 and the other uh, new Scarlet interfaces that have that air mode. But I wanted to record at least a little bit with that mode enabled so that you can hear how it sounds with the included microphone. So <laughs> this is how it sounds with the included microphone. I think whether you prefer the sound with the air mode enabled is going to depend a lot on the particular microphone you're using, which is why I wanted to try it with the included microphone, but it'll also depend on your personal preference and even your own voice. You know, some voices may benefit more from it than others. Uh, some voices, you know, they may just not sound that good with the air mode enabled. So if you do get one of these interfaces, you're definitely going to have to try it out for yourself, see which way you prefer. But if nothing else, you'll at least have one point of comparison for how the air mode at least changes my voice with the included microphone. So there you have it, and just to note, I didn't change the gain or anything else between recordings. The only thing I changed was I turned on the air mode. So there you have a little bit of audio from the setup. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can expect out of it. Like I said, lots of information about the interface out there. Uh, nothing too surprising or unexpected. Works very well, and if you only need one microphone input, I think it's a great option for the price. And as far as the studio bundle, I think if you need a microphone and headphones, and this bundle falls within your budget and you don't have some very specific need for a specific microphone, then I think the microphone and headphones that this bundle comes with are pretty decent. So I may do more testing with this microphone later. Uh, I may connect it up to my interface that has two inputs so that I can do kind of some A-B switching back and forth with other microphones just to kind of get a comparison and a better feel for how this microphone compares to some others. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want me to test out with the microphone or with the interface, just let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.